Hello there and welcome to the new topic where we were going to create the date slicer within the Power BI. So a scenario for this is that suppose you have a dashboard and a report where you want to give the flexibility to the end user where they can select the different date ranges with which they can filter the entire report or the dashboard. Dates has a very important part in the every report. For example, you have a sales for so many years and you just want to compare, let's say, the last two year sales or within a specific period because you may want to evaluate an impact. Similarly, in the HR related reporting, you may want to look at in within a specific period how much new joinees have been joined and then based what is their designation so on and so forth but the overall idea is that we want to give the flexibility to the end user so with, with which they can filter the entire report and dashboard via, via the given dates so let's look at how we can create it in, within power bi all right so here we are within power bi and what we will do is we will just track this little bit down here and in this space we were going to create the uh, the date filter for that what we were going to take is the slicer info over here so we have this slicer which has come here i will just drag this up over here and then since it is selected i will going to select what is have what we have is the order date so once we click over here on the order date what you will see a range date range has been given via which we can we can basically uh, create a range so it is starting from 1st of january 2009 and going all the way till 12th the uh, sorry the 30th december 2012 so now if i am interested to reduce the range from the start date and from the end date i want to reduce the date between these two the entire report and dashboard you will see is refreshed based on this information and now if you will see over here we have this information to clear the selection these small icons if you're able to see so if we just click it over here this will going to clear the uh, whatever we have selected or changed within the uh, power within the slicer for date now date slicer has a lot of different features so right now what we are doing is we are finding the date between the two different dates which has a start date and end date so all the data between these two date and if you see this drop down the down arrow we have this between by default selected we have the various different option like the before after list drop down relative date and relative time so let's try selecting a couple of them so for example before is something you want to select the end date and you want to be able to adjust the end date that means the start date is fixed but you have the flexibility to change the end date similarly the opposite of that is the after that means the end date is fixed but you have the option of changing it from the start date to make sure that uh, whatever is present at the end should be fixed but within that period you want to be able to change the start date so that's what we are changing it over here now if you will see we have a list list is nothing but it will give you this this list of dates in which you can select which is a quite straightforward then we have the drop down drop down is especially useful if you want to save some space but if you will select it you will find the same list information within the dates uh, within the drop down format uh, relative date is a very interesting feature because what happens is uh, it shows you what has been in the last one week last one month last one quarter or last n quarter like last three quarter and so on and so forth so this is what it is present last next or this so maybe last one we can change the value of one to two to three or anything so last one days weeks weeks calendar month month calendar because there can be a fiscal year as well so if you have that then in that case it will be uh, present over here and by default it provides you the calendar also so last one month is something what we will select and it will going to display nothing because the data is finishing at 2012 and over here it shows you what is being selected 
So from August 29 to September 28 is basically the current date which is going on over here. Uh, but overall, you must have got the idea as to how important this is wherever you have the most current data and you want to be able to look at uh, the previous week, month, days and years information. So that's about what the different flexibility that it provides us uh, with the dates over here. Now, if you will see over here uh, in the field over the date, you have the couple of options like if you want to rename the order date or uh, you want to produce a date hierarchy. So once we click it over here, what you will see is the year, quarter, month and date. And over here, the hierarchy is now being created. So once I click over here, the after 2009, the year, you have the quarter, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. If you want to select a particular quarter, the that quarter information will be shown to you. But if you want to expand and just want to select Jan and Feb for 2009 quarter one, only that information will be selected. So using this option, which was the date hierarchy, we get this flexibility where we can produce this information quite easily. So that's that's another feature that I wanted to show you. But apart from that, you have a couple of formatting options. So if I just uh, go back and just select any 2009 as the visualization, you have a couple of formatting options like, uh, for example, the selection control option that we have like uh, single select is right now off and we are able to do the multi selection by holding down the control key. As you can see, it, it, this is what it is enabled. But if you want to enable the single select, you will see that it has now changed to radio buttons. That means you are forcing the users to only select the one single option over here. So if I just go down, you will see the various different options that is being present over here. And I will be able to select only one option from the given number of options over here. So I'll just select the 2001. So this is one of the features that we have. We can make it on and we can make it off. However, uh, we have this multi-select with control. Right now it is on. You can also uh, disable it. And there is another interesting feature which is select all option. Because many times it happens that we want to display all of the data. In that case, what we were going to enable this is show all or select all. And uh, as the name suggests, it will going to select all of the data points or all of the filter values and our dashboard and refresh will be selected automatically. So as you can see, it has a lot of different features, but I wanted to show you something which is related to the uh, uh, related to the selections as we are more interested in over here. But you have, uh, as you can see, you have items like you can change the font color, you can change the background color. You can increase the text size if let's say the text size is one of the concern to you or your organization is following a different type of uh, formatting then you have the title if you want to enable the title or disable the title what should be the title text so on and so forth that we can customize and you can see a lot of different options being given so I'll leave it up to you because uh, this, this may take the whole one hour to, to explain each and everything. But uh, go ahead and explore that. And let me know in the comments if you have any question. I will be happy to answer that. With that, thank you so much and let's meet in the next video.